The O'Donnell family quilt is a colorful patchwork of classes, cultures, and political affiliations, but the common thread that knits us all together is a tireless work ethic, a fierce determination to stand for something and for each other, and an enormous sense of pride, place, and love. We have our disagreements just like any other American family, but we work past them and set them aside because we love each other. We come together from all these different, sometimes opposing views and opinions, and we find our way to common ground, to a place of shared purpose and meaning. I think every American family is its own little melting pot. In ours, there was a whole lot of Italian and Irish, with a healthy dose of American blue blood thrown into the mix. By all outward appearances, we're one big happy family, and this is true from our inside perspectives as well. That's not to say we didn't have our problems. We did. Along with the great times, we had some tough times as a family. To the outside world, it might have looked like we were the Waltons, living in the suburbs instead of the mountains. And in a lot of ways, that was true. But in addition to the financial struggles that you can imagine would arise in raising six children, yes, there were six of us, my dad drank heavily during my childhood. He doesn't drink like that anymore, and I'm proud of the way we've powered past it all. Our difficulties don't define us. It's how we deal with them that shapes who we are. Frankly, I'm a little wary of politicians with perfect pasts, and I've come to regard the imperfections that have found my family over the years as badges of honor, not marks of shame. My parents are the true heroes of my story, and were it not for their strength, their faith, and their boundless courage, my journey could have gone another way. My mother's refusal to let her family fall apart on the back of my father's alcoholism was and remains an inspiration. My father's willingness to let himself be lifted by the love of his family to a place where he could do the hard work necessary to make himself whole. Well, it's been kind of a revelation. Ah, but I don't mean to get ahead of the story. My story. Our story. My parents grew up in the same Philadelphia neighborhood, so they knew each other as kids. My mom, Carol Chilano, is Italian. Her parents were first-generation Italian-Americans. My dad, Dan O'Donnell, is Irish-American, with family roots in this country that quite possibly reach all the way back to our founding fathers. My parents lived in opposite ends of what they've always called the Corpus Christi part of town. You won't find that name on a map of the city, but in those days, to hear my parents tell it, Philadelphia neighborhoods were known by the churches in each community. My mom lived on the Italian side of the neighborhood, and my dad lived on the Irish side, with a playground in between on Clearfield Street. They started dating as teenagers, and they've been together ever since. They even married as teenagers, so they got a good running start. And they still keep in touch with the neighborhood friends from the playground. My paternal grandmother, Kathleen Carroll, had a real zest for living. She was witty, charming, and full of spunk. I remember visiting her in the hospital when she was dying, and she said, Go get my purse. Let's go dancing. And she was serious. Kathleen Carroll came from a long line of Carrolls, for a time one of the most prominent families in Philadelphia. We were always told that one of Grandmom's great-great-great great uncles was Charles Carroll, a United States senator from Maryland, the longest living and last surviving signer of our Declaration of Independence. We were never able to confirm a direct relation, but I mention the connection here because I know my naysaying critics are fact-checking this book. I'm hoping to use their scrutiny to my advantage, either to confirm our long-presumed link to Charles Carroll of Carrollton or to set it to rest just in case we'll have it covered. At a young age, my grandmother found herself in a family way, after taking up with my grandfather, Francis O'Donnell. The circumstances surrounding the relationship and the pregnancy caused a great scandal, and in the end, she was estranged from her family, and cut off from what would have been a sizable inheritance. I can't imagine what my grandmother suffered for the choices she made as a young woman, but in the years to come, her courage and great conviction came back into play because it turned out that my grandfather was an alcoholic, the same disease that would later haunt my father. Only in Grandpa O'Donnell's case, sad to say, the battle didn't exactly go his way. The marriage didn't last, and my grandmother eventually found someone special, 
a wonderful stable man named John who worked hard in a gas station and was utterly devoted to my grandmother. We called him Grandpa John because in time he became more of a grandfather to us than Francis. In fact, later on, my grandmother's dying wish was to make sure my father would look after John once she was gone. And as always, my father was true to his word. Grandpa John ended up moving in with my parents the last couple years of his life. And here again, the takeaway for me was the importance of family.